Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube series. In this YouTube series, I'm going to cover about Spring Web Client. Spring Web Client is a new addition to the Spring ecosystem through which you can build modern RESTful API clients. In this lecture, I'm going to cover how to perform get, post, put and delete operations using Web Client. Before we get into the details of how to implement, I would like to set the scope for this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover what is Web Client, why Web Client, and learn how to write and perform get, post, put, and delete operations using Spring Web Client. Let's start with Spring Web Client. Spring Web Client got released as part of Spring 5. It's part of the Spring Web Flux module. This is a functional style API. Using Web Client, you can build both synchronous and asynchronous REST API client. But Spring Web Client is asynchronous by default. Now I would like to talk about why Web Client. In order to justify why you should start using Web Client, I'm going to go to the browser and then search for REST template. REST template is one of the popular REST client that's part of the Spring framework. I'm going to click on this first link. Let me zoom in a little bit. If you take a look at the notes section here, here it's given as, as of 5.0, the non-blocking reactive web client offers a modern alternative to the REST template with efficient support for both sync and async, as well as streaming scenarios. The REST template will be deprecated in a future version and will not have any new major features added going forward. See the web client section of the Spring Framework reference documentation for more details and example code. This is one of the reason why I am pushing towards web client and we should stop using REST template as part of our applications. Let me give you a quick overview of what we are going to build as part of this lecture. We are going to build an app called employee app which will behave as a REST client for the employee RESTful service. Basically, the web client code will be present in this application. Employee RESTful service is a RESTful service which exposes a bunch of endpoints which our employee app is going to interact with. So the first step, we are going to download the necessary content for this lecture from GitHub. The link for the actual GitHub repository is available in the description below. So I'm going to go to the browser and then the repository that you will be looking at is a spring web client it's under the organization code with the leap so if you click on this it will give you the actual download link copy this link once that is done we are going to download this to our local so i have a directory called spring web client and then i have another directory called codebase i'm going to navigate to the directory and then i'm going to do a git clone and then give that link it's downloading the content from GitHub to my local. If I do a ls, I have this folder called Spring Web Client. I'm going to navigate to the directory. And then if I do a ls, I have like four different folders. Employee app, employee app starter, employee service, and employee service executable. In these four folders, the main folders that we will be focusing on is employee app starter and employee service executable. I would like to go back to GitHub and then show you the significance of each and every directory. Let's go back to this. In here, employee app starter, it, which has the initial code that's necessary to start building the REST client, and employee app is the final app that we will be building as part of this lecture. An employee service executable, if you go inside that one, it is a simple jar file. We will use this jar file. This jar file is, has the necessary code to expose all the endpoints. This is a simple uh, Spring Boot application. And employee service is the actual source code for the employee service executable. Now it's time to start importing the project into the IntelliJ and then we will be building the REST client using Spring Web Client. I'll be using IntelliJ for this lecture. So the first step, we are going to import the project into IntelliJ. Click on the import project button and then I'm going to navigate to the directory where I have downloaded the content from github click on the code base go to spring web client and then in here select the employee app starter and then click open 
this is a griddle based project so i'm going to have the griddle option selected here and then click next i'm going to have use auto import and create directories for empty content routes automatically option selected and then click finish so if you take a look at it i'm using uh, java 8 if you are using java 11 this code base should work with java 11 too click finish would you like to overwrite it the answer is yes as you can see, it is uh, downloading all the contents that are necessary for this project. And you, once you see all these green ticks here, that means it had successfully downloaded all the dependencies for this project. I would like to explain about the builder griddle file before we uh, start to write the code. I'm gonna click on the supply suggestion. Let me zoom in a little bit. So in here, um, this is not a Spring Boot project. This is a simple Gradle based project. I have the web client dependencies here. You need to have the Spring Web Flux and then React Unity. And in here, I'm using Lombok to auto generate the getters and setter and all other um, additional methods for my domain object that will, I'll be using in this uh, project. And in here, I have Jackson related dependencies added. And after that, I'll be using uh, JUnit 5 for this particular um, lecture. The reason why I'm using JUnit 5, at some point, JUnit 4 is going to go away. It's uh, generally better to start using the latest and greatest and then get yourself familiarized with that. Now it's time to explore the project. If you expand uh, main and test, you have a bunch of classes. These are just empty classes if you look at it. I have empty classes created in here. I have the empl employee domain object, which is again empty. And if you expand the test directory, you have the employee rest client. This is again an em empty class actually. Now it's time to start writing the code to connect to the employee restful service. For that, we need the employee restful service first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate to the directory where we have downloaded all the content from GitHub. In here, I'm going to do CD employee service if an executable if you do a ls you will see employee service dot jar file so we are going to launch this jar file this jar file is going to expose a bunch of endpoints the way to do it is uh, using this handy command which is java if jar employee service dot jar so this is a simple uh, Spring Boot project and then uh, it uses in-memory database to uh, store and retrieve the employee details. As you see uh, here, this employee RESTful service comes with some initial data. When you see this message, employee RESTful service, initial data ends, that's a signal the application started successfully. Now what we are going to do is we are going to look into the endpoints that this particular service has. If you go to the code with the leap spring up client um, github repository in here you have the swagger spec basically it is a link uh, for the swagger spec if you look at it it runs on the port 8081 so when we build the client we will be building the client that connects to the 8081 port so if you look at this this has the complete metadata information about um, the employee restful service and um, let's explore the endpoints in the model. Let's start with the model. If you look at the employee, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, six properties. And each and every property has a description about uh, the significance of the property in the right side. And after that, if you expand this, we have like a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, six endpoints. So the goal is to build the actual uh, risk lines for these endpoints. Now we have this particular employee restful service running in our local. If you're going to click on the try it out and then click execute. If you do that, it's going to retrieve the data. So if you look at it, it retrieved the data from our local actually. So if you go and check the loggers, let's go to the process, receive the request to ret uh, for retrieving all the employees and then it responded with these four data. If you take a look at, look at it, the ID is one, two, three, and four. That's what you see here. Now what we are going to do, we are going to build the REST client for this particular endpoint. Copy this uh, URL. This is the URL which has, which is going to connect to the retrieve all uh, employees endpoint and then 
return the data. So now let's go back to IntelliJ. So in the IntelliJ, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the employee REST client. I'm going to have this URL, uh, I mean, pasted here so that I can use it as a reference when I actually um, connect with it endpoint. Now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a method public. So this method is going to retrieve all the employees. So I'm going to have it as list of employee and followed by that, let's give it a name. The name is going to be retrieve all employees. So this method is not going to accept any input. This is basically going to call this endpoint and then retrieve all the employees. So what do we need in order to make a call? The first thing is we need the instance of web client. Okay, I'm going to um, have the access modifier as private. Let's create a constructor because I want this web client in, uh, instance to be injected from a class outside employee rest client, right? And after this, what do we do? We are going to connect to that endpoint. Web client's um, API is a functional style API. As soon as I press dot, as soon as I type dot, basically it gives me all the options of what kind of method you want to perform. So this endpoint is a get endpoint. I'm going to do get and followed by that, I'm going to pass the URI. So what is a URI? The URI starts with HTTP and ends with all employees. But if you look at it, this is the base URL, right? I don't want the base URL to be part of this URI because web client has a handy way of having the instance created with the base URL. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just have this in a constant and then have this value referenced from that constant. So in here, you see this employee constants, right? I'm going to create a constant here. I'm going to give it a name. The name is going to be public static final. It's a type string. It's going to be get all employees v1. There you go. So we have the constant created. Now it's time to put the constant here. I'm going to do a static import of that one. There you go. And after that, type in the dot. So you have a couple of options basically. You can do a retrieve or you can do an exchange. So exchange is one option and retrieve is one option. So in this lecture, I'm going to use retrieve. I'll explain about uh, the differences between retrieve and exchange in the next lecture. For now, we will use retrieve. Retrieve is a call which is going to make the call to that endpoint. And after that, what do we want to do? We want to convert, uh, after this retrieve call is made, you will get the response object, right? The response for this endpoint is going to return multiple values. In that case, we will do a body to flux. Flux is a reactive type, which represents many elements. Mono is again a reactive type, which represent one element. So in here, what is a type that it is going to return? It is going to return the type as employee.class, right? And after that, what are we going to do? We are going to collect this value as a list. There you go. And after this, since I mentioned uh, web client is a asynchronous call by default in order to make this web client instance to behave like a synchronous client, you have to make a call to this one block. When you do it, that's when it is going to behave as a blocking client. So we have the web client uh, instance ready. Now it's time to add the properties to the employee domain model. So what are the properties? I'm going to go back to the swagger spec in here. So the domain model has each. So let's uh, give those values. So the first thing is let's add age. Age is an integer. So I'm going to have private integer age. What's the next thing? The next thing is first name. So we're going to add the first name, it's going to be private uh, string first name. Followed by that, it's going to be the gender. Gender is again uh, the string. So private string gender. Followed by that, what is the next property? The next property is ID. ID represents a unique, uh, it is a unique ID for this particular um, 
employee so it's going to be private integer id after that what is the next property the next property is going to be the last name right so i'm going to put it here it's going to be private string last name there we go what is the last property the last property is going to be the role role represents what is the role that this particular employee plays in this organization it's going to be a private string role so in the builder gradle file if you look at it we are using lombok right so how do we enable lombok for this workspace number one we have to have the lombok plugin installed so if you go to the plugin section you can uh, click on the marketplace option and then search for lombok so lombok in my machine i have it installed if you take a look at it the option is disabled that means it is installed if you don't have it installed you will have uh, something like this available you can click uh, and then install that plugin into your workspace and then restart your workspace to have that uh, have those changes reflected once that is done we are going to do uh, this annotation processors to search for that option you have to have this option enabled enable annotation processor processing you have to enable the checkbox and then click apply and then click ok so basically now you have lombok configuration applied to this workspace and then we can start using the uh, data at um, all arcs constructor at no arcs constructor so it generates you all the getters that is two strings constructors for you by adding these annotation at the top of this class now it's time to build a test case that's going to test this method and then retrieve all the employees from the instance that is running in our local so if you take a look at it in our local we have this instance running basically you have to have this instance running in order for this code to work so let's go to the employee risk client i'm going to put this in the split particularly mode i don't know whether you guys have used it this is really handy when you are writing test case for a class that you are going to write test case for so what is the first step the first step is we are going to need a private uh, web client so web client is instance which we are going to inject to the class right so next we will create employee service employee risk client employee risk client equal to new employee risk client so we have the instance but this instance requires the base url right basically it requires a web client instance so what we are going to do we are going to do web client dot web client has a handy method called create there you go for the create you can pass the base url so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this whole thing let's define um, a constant private static final string and then it's going to be this value now let's give it a name base url and then we are going to pass this base url to it so if you look at it it has the option to take the base url as an uh, input and then still create an instance of a client so what we are going to do we are going to use this to inject into the employee risk client there you go so we have the employee risk client with the web client instance injected to it now it's time to write the test case since i'm using uh, jnet5 jnet5 has the option of not provide you don't have to provide uh, the test case to be with the public access modifier still it behaves as a jnet test so but you need to give the annotation or test even if you do not have experience working with uh, jnode 5 that's fine all you need to know at this point is that you don't have to provide the public access modifier that you normally provide in a jnode 4 based test case so in here what are we going to do we are going to use the employee risk client instance and then call the retrieve employees retrieve employees and what is that it is going to return it is going to return a list of employee employee list let's give it a name there you go 
and then let's import this so what do we expect so we are going to expect some values right so let's do assert assert equals or assert uh, true I'm gonna do assert true and here import static method so if you take a look at it I'm selecting something called arg.junit.jupyter.api that's one of the API that's part of the JUnit 5 if you are using JUnit 4 you would you will just see arg.junit that's one of the key things that you have to um, pay attention to. So in here, dot size greater than zero. Basically, if the particular uh, endpoint returns you some data, then the list size is going to be greater than zero, right? That's what we are asserting. I'm going to remove this, I believe that's unwanted. And if you take a look at it, um, the art test annotation that I have used, again, this is also arg.junit.jupyter.api.test if you have used uh, junit4 you won't see jupyter in it now what I'm going to do I'm going to run this test case so what I'm expecting I'm expecting the test case to give me a green bar there you go I got the green bar just for the sake of uh, looking at the data I can run this in debug mode but still um, it's good to see the data in the console and then I'm going to run this. So you see all the data, like employee age 50, employee age 50, Adam Sandler, and then um, age 44, Amy, Amy Adams, and in here, Jenny Richards. So we have uh, successfully written a test, uh, risk client using web client, and we wrote a test case testing their functionality is working as expected. Now let's go ahead and explore the other endpoints. Now it's time to explore the next endpoint. So the next endpoint that I'm going to explore is the retrieve an employee using the employee ID. Take a look at the URL, it's slash v1 slash employee, and then we are going to pass the ID as a path param. Let's go ahead and see how the URL is going to look like. So if I pass the value as one, what I'm going to get. I'm going to get the response as the employee ID is one, Chris Evans, and this person is a lead engineer. And in here, let's check if I pass the value as 10, what is the response that I'm going to receive? If you take a look at it, the response is 404 and it's error, meaning there is no employee found with the ID 10. So we will go ahead and explore these two different types of responses. In here, let's write a new method. It's going to be, the response is going to be the employee object because we are going to pass a ID. For that ID, we are going to get the employee as a response. So it's going to be retrieve employee by ID. So the input to this method is going to be int employee ID. So we are going to use the client instance client dot get so what is a URL so the URL is this right let's put this here for reference so basically until this point it's the same it's just this this part actually so URI and in here what we are going to do I'm going to move this URI to a constant so let's go to this constant In here, let's put this here. So this ID is going to be a dynamic value. So I'm going to put it in the curly braces and it's a path param by the way. And after this, let's copy this whole thing. Put it here. So let's give it a name. It's going to be employee by ID underscore v1 okay so we are going to retrieve an employee by id that's the meaning of it so in the place of uri you will pass that and then how do we um, assign the value let's uh, import this constant there you go how do we assign the employee id to this url so if you put comma and then pass this employee id web client automatically assigns that value to that path param 
and after that we are going to make the call to the retrieve this is where the actual api call happens followed by that this is going to be uh, different from the previous method the previous method uh, we were retrieving multiple employees but in here we are going to retrieve a single employee right so in that case you would use body to mono mono represents single object and in here it's going to be employee dot class so followed by that it's going to be a call to the block because we want the web client to behave as a synchronous call there you go and then we are going to do a return return there you go so we have uh, we have the retrieve employee id rest client method completed now let's go ahead and write the test case for that one it's going to be void there you go and now what we are going to do we are going to use the employee rest client instance and then make the call to the method retrieve employee by id so what is the id that we are going to pass the id is going to be employee id equal to one right so if you pause it here there you go and what is this method going to return this method is going to return employee and employee so what is the, what are the values of this uh, employee object so if you go and take a look at here going to pause the values one and then click execute so it's going to return me um, chris evans is the first name and last name so i'm going to assert on that actually so in here i'm just going to assert on the first name so let's do assert equals first name is chris right so from the employee object i will do dot get first name there you go now let's go ahead and run this test case so we got the green bar as expected that means the method that we wrote is able to make the call to the restful web service uh, the employee restful web service that's running in my local machine and it was able to retrieve the response from it now let's go ahead and explore by passing an invalid id so if you pass an invalid id what you would expect right so I'm going to name this test case as not found. So that's what we are going to uh, receive as a response. If we take a look at it, if we pass the value as 10 and then uh, click execute, basically you get a 404 response code, right? So in that case, from a test, test case perspective, uh, how it would uh, look like actually. So JNode 5 has a handy way of uh, handling the errors. I'm going to show you that. So it's going to be assertions dot assert throws in here any uh, error response that we receive from a web client instance it's going to be web client response exception so that's the response um, error uh, exception class which gets the access to the actual uh, error code and the error message so i'm going to name this one as dot class followed by that it's going to take a lambda so if you take a look at it it's going to take a lambda and then in the lambda we will pass the actual call to the employee risk client so employee risk client dot retrieve employee by id and then pass the employee id there you go so now you have assertions dot asset throws the client response exception is the expected exception and lambda through lambda we are making the actual call to the method which the method name is retrieve employee by id now i'm going to go ahead and run this example i'm expecting a green bar because oh this is i mean this value should be 10 actually because uh, for one it's going to retrieve a valid employee from the restful web service there you go so we got the green bar as expected so this is how you handle a exception scenario using jnode 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a try catch block so that it gives us uh, more information so that we can leverage the logger, right? So we will uh, print something in the logger on the response code and the response uh, message that we received as part of the exception. So I'm going to do a try catch block here. Try catch. So it's going to be web client response exception. Let's assign a variable followed by that. What are we going to do? So I'm going to do, so I'm going to use a Tesla for generation. This again uh, makes use of Lombok. There you go. So in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give um, log dot 
error. So in the error object, uh, you, you can access the, in the error uh, method, you can print the error code and, expo um, and the response body that we received as part of this call. So in here, what we are going to do, it's going to be error response code is and the response body is body is so let's give it a uh, call braces so you can give uh, like ex dot get raw status code and followed by that what you can do ex dot get response body as string so so we have the error line ready what is the next thing the next thing is going to be log dot error print the whole exception so you have the option to print the whole stack trees also in the client response exception is yes. so in here um let's give it the method name in retrieve by employee id Followed by that, you just give a comma and then ex. This prints the whole stack trace uh, in the console. There you go. Now, uh, what is the next catch block? The next catch block is going to be exception ex. Followed by that, it's going to be, let's um, copy the same line and then put it here. But in the place of a web client response exception, let's put this one, okay? And then uh, we have to throw this exception. So I want this exception to be thrown to the caller. So the caller here is a JUnit test case. It's going to be throw ex. Same here, throw ex, there you go. So we have the catch block that catches the exception and then throws the exception. Basically we are caching it so that it can log a lot of information in the logger. And that's going to help you when you are going to debug any kind of issue in your application so i'm going to run it and then i'm going to show you the exception so there you go the error response code is so if you take a look at it it's the actual logger that we have here and then the response body is empty because for 404 we are not sending any response body if you send a response body then you would definitely seeing you will definitely be seeing some kind of data here and the stack tree is right so if you go and uh, search for this one the reason why you see all these stack, stack trays is because of this particular line. Basically, you will normally put this in a production code. The reason being, you want to see what happened to the call when you are trying to debug an issue in production environment. So we have uh, successfully completed writing the retrieve employee by ID endpoint. Actually, now let's go ahead and explore the next endpoint. The next endpoint is going to be I want to complete the get endpoints first and then uh, move to the next types. So in here we have employee by name. So let's try it out. If you click on try it out, you have the option to pass the name. I'm going to pass the name as Chris. Click execute. So in here, um, if you take a look at it, this is being sent as a request param. So this is a URL. So for Chris, we receive this is again uh, wrapped in an array. Basically, you're going to get a list of values because there is a possibility uh, multiple employees can have the same first name. That's one of the reason this is being uh, sent as a array of employee. Now, if I pass ABC, what you would get? So you'll, you'll get a response as 404. Basically, it's a not found response. So we are going to cover both of these scenarios by writing a new method so I'm going to minimize this now let's write on write the next method the method name is going to be public so this is going to retrieve a list of employees and after that let's give it a name it's going to be retrieve employee by name there you go so in here what we are going to do we are going to use the web client instance and then write the method when you make the call to the endpoint so in here get dot uri so this uri is basically uh, a request param right so for this purpose i'm going to use the uri components builder let's go ahead and declare that uri components builder is something which is part of the spring util basically using this uh, you can build a uri in here 
we can give from URA string right from URA string I'm going to um, have a new constant created so what is the URL actually so if you go and take a look at it this is how the URL is going to look like right so the URL is going to be like this and here uh, what is the actual URL it starts from v1 and this is the URL right so basically we just need uh, the URL from here from v1 to employee name because this is going to be a request param so I'm going to copy this I'm gonna put it here employee by name by name and then let's give the v1 so in here it's going to be a string again there you go we have the constant created let's go ahead and use this in our URA string there you go let's import this constant so after that what we are going to do we have the option to pass the query name right so it's going to be a query param and then um, the input is going to come from outside right basically the outside here is a JNO test case so I'm going to give a string employee name and then I'm going to pass this so the what is the actual constant that we have to pass if you take a look at it it has to be employee underscore name that's the key basically so I'm going to pass that value here followed by that what we're going to do we are going to pass the actual name there you go and then we have to call the build dot to URA string so we have the URA gets created this way string URA there you go let's give it a equal to so now we have the URA created and now what we are going to do we are going to make the call to the endpoint so it's going to be again retrieve and followed by that it's going to return multiple values so in that case you would use a flux client oh it's going to be employee.class employee.class followed by that it's going to be the call to the collect to list and after that it's going to be block there you go now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, copy the similar exception handling here and then I'm going to put the try block here there you go now I'm gonna change a method name here make sure you change it because um, otherwise it will be confusing when you're trying to debug something okay so now we have the client completely ready let's go ahead and invoke this from the test case and then make this code test it to make sure it's going to work as expected so it's going to be our test void so retrieve employee by name right so what is the name that we are going to pass the name is going to be string name equal to Chris so that's the name I'm going to pass and then it's going to be ret employee risk client dot retrieve employee by name that's the endpoint and after this we are going to pass the name there you go and then this is going to return you a list of employee right it's going to be list of employee employees there you go and after this what we are going to do we are going to basically assert on it so I'm going to use the same condition that I have here It's going to be employees that's one condition what is the next one so the response that we are going to get is let me pass one click execute the response that we are going to get is a 200 but why do we not see any response did I click execute there you go but I still get 404 for some reason let me refresh the screen Oh, I should be passing the name sorry that's my bad so in here I have to pass the name as Chris so the first response object is Chris again I'm going to assert on it uh, from the employees what I'm going to get I'm going to get of zero this is going to give me access to the 
employee object there we go and then i can use the same condition that i have here right because uh, it's the same employee that's being retrieved let's go ahead and run this i'm expecting a green bar missing return statement there you go so we have to have a return statement here So we got the green bar as expected. This means the client that we wrote is able to make the connection to the RESTful web service that's running in my local and it is able to retrieve the response. Now I'm going to do the not found call, right? So we have to uh, test the failure scenario also. So it's going to be not found. And here it's going to be, I'm going to do the same thing. But the way we handle the exception is going to be different. So let's copy the string name as Chris. There you go. And here we are going to follow the same pattern that we have here. Assertion dot assert throws. In here, what is the call? It's going to be retrieve employee by name. And then we are going to pass the name as an input. All right. So this should give me a green bar. But it gave me a, oops, I mean, uh, it did not throw. So expected was this web client response exception to be thrown, but nothing was thrown. The reason being, we are still passing Chris. We should pass an invalid uh, name. That's when it's going to give you the exception. There you go. We got the green bar as expected. And then you see all the exception stack trees and everything in the logger. So that's going to help you when you debug these kind of issues. Now it's time to explore the next endpoint, which is the post endpoint. So in the post endpoint, what we are going to see, so post endpoint is an endpoint which is going to add a new employee into the database. And the URL is slash v1 and employee adds a new employee. Let's go ahead and create a web client, basically a risk client using the web client for this endpoint. So I'm going to create a new method, which is going to be public and this method is going to return the newly added employee as a response. And then I'm going to name this method as add new employee. There you go. And then we are going to use the web client instance, web client dot post dot URI. So what's a URI? The URI is slash v1 slash employee. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a new constant here so it's going to be slash v1 slash employee so let's change a let's give it a new name add new employee let's remove these things and then have v1 there so we have successfully added a new constant for some reason it is giving compilation issue let's figure out we are missing a double quotes there. There you go. So we have the constants created. We will use this constant in our web client instance. And here you're going to pass the add new employee. And after that, what do we do? We perform the retrieve, right? But before this, we need to pass the new employee object. So it has a handy method called sync body. Sync body takes in a employee. So now we will add the employee. So this is going to be the new employee that we are going to get from a class outside this in our use case, it's going to be the JNet test case. So in here you pass that um, new employee object. This is an object which will be transported over the network to the rest service that is running in our local machine. And then the new employee gets added into the database. It's going to be body to mono, and then it's going to be employee dot class. After that, we're going to do the block. There you go. So now we have to return this. So we have created the REST client for adding a new employee into the employee RESTful service. Let's create a test case for that. So it's going to be our test. So it's going to be void. And the actual method name is going to be add new employee. There you go. So what do we need? The first thing that we need is the employee object. So let's create one employee equal to new employee. So what are we going to pass? The first parameter is a null because it's the employee ID. Let's go to the 
employee object. So this is a domain object. The first one is ID. So let me put this at the top. The first one is ID. The next one is a age, right? So what is the age? The age I'm going to give it as 54. Followed by that, let's check what does the constructor look like? Integer, integer, and after that, the string. So after that, what do we have? We have the first name, last name, gender, and role. The first name is going to be, so I'm going to have uh, the new employee as Iron Man. Iron Man. And followed by that, so he's going to play the role of what? So gender is male and the role is going to be lead engineer. So I'm going to, or I'm going to give uh, Iron Man as an architect. So it's going to be male. Followed by that, it's going to be architect. There you go. So we have the employee object created. Now it's time to pass the employee object to the add new employee method that we just created, right? So we are going to use the employee rest client instance. Followed by that, we are going to call the add new employee and then pass the new employee here, right? So what do we expect? We expect the employee object, the persistent employee object in the rest service as a response. So what do we expect? The employee ID is something which we are passing it as null. We are expecting this value to be returned as not null value, right? So I'm going to give assert true. Assert true employee one dot get ID not equal to null. So when you get this value, that means the employee got persisted and then it generated a employee ID for the Rust client that we made. So for the sake of uh, visibility, what I'm going to do, I'm going to print the whole employee object in the console. So once we run this test case, we'll be able to see that. Let me add the double quotes here. There you go. We should be seeing this in the console with the employee ID as a valid value instead of a null. I'm going to run the test case. I hope you guys still have the REST service running in your local. So it's launching the test case and then we got the green bar. As you can see here, I have the employee ID as five. This means the employee ID, we were successfully able to save the employee into the employee RESTful service, which uses an in-memory database. And then we got the employee ID as five. How can we verify this? Let's go to this one. I'm going to hit this endpoint. In this endpoint, I should be seeing Iron Man. There you go. I see Iron Man here and the ID is five. So this is the same ID that we received as a response, right? And now let's uh, cover the error scenario. So the error, for the error scenario, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the same thing and then put it here. So we're gonna add the try catch block. And here uh, it's going to be add new employee, add new employee. There you go. And after this, let's copy the same test case and then put it here. I'm going to pass an invalid input. So if you go and check the model, in the model, the first name represents the first name of the employee. This is a not null value. What I'm going to do in order to make this fail, I'm going to pass the first name as a null value. So in the place of first name, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass null. So if I pass null, I'm expecting a 400 bad request as a response. And here uh, it's the same call. So let's give it a meaningful name here. It's going to be bad request. And then what do we expect? We cannot expect an employee object back because we are going to receive an error response. So I'm going to copy the same code, whatever we have here, assertions dot assert throws. And in here, it's going to be a Lambda. So basically this is a function call. So let's close, take this one off. There you go. So we have uh, successfully returned the test case for an error scenario. Let's go ahead and run this. 
I'm expecting a web client response exception. There you go. We got the green bar as expected. Let's go and check what is the error that is returned from the RESTful service. Error response code is 400 and the response body is please pass all the input fields first name. So it is asking you to pass the first name as part of the request object. But this use case is to verify whether we are receiving a error response or not. So this is where uh, all these loggers comes in handy and it's really helpful when we are trying to debug an issue actually. Now it's time to code the next endpoint. Let's go to the Swagger spec. So in the Swagger spec, the next endpoint that we are going to explore is a put endpoint. So the put endpoint takes in an ID and then the employee object. So we are going to update uh, the name of an employee, existing employee through this endpoint. So now, now let's go ahead and code that one. So it's going to be a new method, it's going to public and this method is going to return you the updated object. So employee and then I'm going to name this method as update employee. So update employee is going to take in two values, right? Number one is the ID and then the update object, basically the whole employee object. So I'm going to pass int employee ID followed by that employee and employee object. So we are going to use the same web client instance and then we are going to use the put endpoint, right? So put endpoint takes in a URI. So what is a URI? The URI here is slash v1 slash employee and then followed by that we have the ID as a bind parameter. So it's similar to this one, right? So we can use the same constant that we have defined. Oh, this is a path param I mentioned about bind, bind value. This is a path variable that we need to pass. So in here, let's go to the constant file. So we can use this employee ID, employee by ID v1. Let's pass this one. And after that, what do we do? We pass the body, right? So we're going to use the same method, which is a sync body. And then we are going to pass the employee as an input. Followed by that, we are going to make the call to the retrieve method. And after that, it's going to be body to mono employee dot class. Followed by that, it's going to be block. So we are going to return this. There you go. So we have uh, successfully written the put endpoint, which is going to update the current employee details. So what are we going to update? I'm going to update an employee who is an existing employee. Let's take an example actually. So let's go here. If you take a look at the, I'm going to take this employee. So I'm going to pass the employee ID as two. I'm, I'm going to change the name from Adam to Adam one, Sandler to Sandler one. So let's create the test method. So the test method is going to be a test void update employee. It's going to be first we need the employee object, right? So I'm going to have the employee object here. So the name is going to be Adam one and the last name is going to be Sandler one. Okay. And then uh, what is the role of this person? I don't want to change the role. So what I'm going to do. So if you don't want to update, you can just pass null here. So if you pass null, it won't get updated. Okay. And then um, we are going to make a call to this one. Update employee dot or not update employee. It's going to be employee risk client dot update employee. So in here we are going to pass the ID and the ID is going to be two followed by that. It's the employee object. There you go. So we are going to get the updated employee in the response, right? Let's give it a name. Updated employee. And then we are going to assert on it. It's going to be assert equals. So what is the name that we expect? We expect the first name to be Adam one, right? Yep. And then followed by that, it's going to be updated employee dot get first name. Same for the last name too, correct? So the last name is going to be Sandler 
one and it's going to be get last name so that's the value that we are passing here adam one and sandler one so i'm trying to assert and make sure the same values got updated as expected now it's time to run the test case we got an error basically so here not enough variables to expand so basically we missed to add this call actually so we need to make a call so that this path variable gets replaced with the actual employee id so now it's time to run the test case this is where test cases comes in handy you can capture all the issues whatever that might happen in the runtime there you go we got the green bar as expected now how can we verify it so our test case is already verifying it it is verifying whether the name got replaced from adam to adam one sandler to sandler one sandler one so now i still i would like to go and check uh, the swagger spec and then uh, call this execute method again to see whether the names got updated as you can see the names got changed from adam to adam one sandler to sandler one there we go now let's cover an error scenario so i'm going to add a try catch block here so in here i'm going to add this there you go so what do we do now let's try to write a test case i'm going to pass an invalid employee id right so I'm going to pass an invalid ID, which is going to give me a response as not found. So the employee ID that I'm going to pass is 200. So 200 is not a valid employee ID in the database. So in that case, what would happen? So I would expect an error that's been thrown from the reservoirs, right? So I'm going to use the same code, whatever we have here, assertion dot assert throws. And followed by that, we are going to add this. There you go. Now it's time to run the test case. There you go. We got the green bar as expected. Now let's take a look at the error response code. The error response code is 404 and the body is empty. So for 404, the service is not giving you any body because 404 means resource not found. It doesn't make sense to add a response body to that. So we have successfully written the test case that covers the error scenario for the update employee risk client. Now it's time to write the last endpoint. So what is the last endpoint? The last endpoint is a delete endpoint. So delete endpoint is something which uh, accepts an ID and then deletes the employee. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a brand new employee and delete that employee because I don't want to disturb the current set of data that your test case depends upon. So in here, what are we going to return? Let's go ahead and uh, check basically. So if we take a look at it, um, I would like to try it out and then see I'm passing the value as, uh, let's say I'm passing the value as five, right? If we pass the value as five and then click execute, this is a response which I'm going to get. Employee deleted successfully, which is a string. So our return type is going to be string delete employee by id so it's going to take the id as an employee id as an input and then delete that particular employee right so it's going to be employee id and here we are going to build a risk client using the same appline instance it's going to be delete dot uri the uri is going to be the same Followed by that, it's going to be employee ID. After that, what are we going to call? We are going to call retrieve, and this is going to give you a string as a response, right? So body to mono string dot class. So followed by that, you're going to do the block call so that this, this is going to behave as a synchronous call. So let's do a return. There you go. So we're going to call this method from our test case. Let's go ahead and write the test case. A test void. It's the same method. So we're going to use the risk client instance. It's going to be employee risk client dot delete. 
employee by id the id is going to be oh so i mentioned about adding a new employee and then deleting that employee right so what i'm going to do i'm going to use the same code that we used for the add new employee there you go so this first step it's going to add the employee followed by that we are going to delete that employee get id there you go so and then this is going to return you a string right string response so this response we are going to assert on it what is the response that we are going to get the response that we are going to get is this employee deleted successfully so i'm going to create a string expected message so let's do assert equals assert equals of expected message comma the response if we get the response as employee deleted successfully that means we have successfully added an employee and then we have successfully deleted that employee so i'm going to print the newly added employee as part of this so i'm going to have in one man iron one and man one because this is just to differentiate what we have at the top there you go we got the green bar as expected so the first step it added a new employee with the id as six and then in the next step we have deleted that employee from the database so if we go and invoke the retrieve all employees endpoint it's not going to give me the idea six so this is the id that we added i shouldn't be seeing it because i deleted it as part of this test case let's go ahead and scroll down there you go you just have four employees here so we have successfully explored all the different uh, popular http methods using the web client instance with this we came to the end of this lecture thank you so much for watching